How's it going guys? In this tutorial, we're gonna be making this animation right here. It is gonna be done in Blender 5.0, which is in beta. So you'll need to go to blender.org and check out the daily builds and get the beta. Uh, otherwise, you're probably watching this in a later time and it's already out and normal and you already have it. This is a really cool tutorial because we're gonna be remaking kind of traditional meta ball uh, movements and behaviors, which is kind of the whole point and the thing that got me really excited about this. So I am going to show you how to create those metaball actions, how to fix geometry problems that you might run into. And at the very end, uh, we're going to make a really beautiful background and some glass dispersion and show you some cool stuff with that. I had a lot of fun this month on Patreon playing with these metaballs and showing you different ways you can style them and make them look really cool. So if you want to check out those four exclusive tutorials on Patreon that is linked in the description, and you can get a discount if you subscribe annually. With that being said, let's get into this tutorial. So open up a just totally empty document in Blender 5.0, and I'm gonna go here to the Geometry Nodes window and make my own custom window situation here. Just throw in any piece of geometry and then click uh, New up here and delete delete the input. And we're gonna pick an object that, uh, just, pick a, just pick an icosphere. I'm, uh, it's the morning, so I can't explain what I'm thinking. So take an icosphere. Uh, this is the shape that the uh, spheres, the metaballs, are going to exist within. So you have to start with the shape uh, in order to put things within the volume of that shape. So we're going to start with here, and we're going to do a mesh to volume node. And that's going to allow us to then do a distribute points within the volume. So distribute points in volume. Now we have points. So this is the spot where we uh, get ourselves the ability to animate and move the points around with a set position. So all this stuff is not 5.0 relevant. Like you can do this anywhere. All this stuff is sort of stable stuff. So now we'll get in a noise texture and then click on the uh, color socket and just drag and unclick. And I'm going to type in scale vector math because I want to get a vector math scale node and we'll plug that right in the offset uh, click normalize and we're going to switch over to 4d so that we can animate our points around so I'm going to take the detail down give it a scale of two bring the scale up a little bit and now we have this and we got a lot of points we're going to do less of those points I just want a few that's probably good so now we're going to introduce if you've never used a uh, blender 5.0 yet we are going to go ahead and get in a points to SDF grid. So points to SDF grid, when we plop that in there, it's going to cut from the output. And that is because this is not compatible with that. So it's going to cut it. So we have to convert it back to readable geometry information. That is going to be a grid to mesh. So grid to mesh. It's going to take that grid information we just turned those points into back into geometry. And now we have this. Now back, uh, the, the version of this that I posted six months ago, I instanced icospheres on the points that we just created. And then I converted those, um, the, I converted those new icospheres into a volume and I converted them back to geometry. And then I also had to realize the instances so that's what this takes the place of. It's far easier on your computer. It's way more efficient and it just works better. So there's a lot of great things. Now you can notice this is pretty low poly. So your voxel size is where you are going to get higher poly. So if you bring it to the left, it is going to subdivide it. Um, and now we have this. So if I play with the noise texture, I'm just going to bring it over here so we can see it. If I play with that, you can see now they're all molding into each other. Now there's a lot of issues that we have to now fix. So notice when I move these around, you can see how the geometry is just kind of dancing around. That is again, uh, because it's low poly. And you'll also notice there's this circular behavior happening. Uh, when we move it around, see that? Notice there's little circles happening. That is gonna be incredibly noticeable. See that? That is gonna be incredibly noticeable when we add glass to this. Now, if we do like um, subsurface materials, other things like that, it'll be less noticeable. I prefer not to dance around problems and try to solve them, which is what has prevented me from making like a perfect metaball geometry notes tutorial. But fear no more, we have 
every fix. Thanks to everyone on Twitter who helps me out. So first we're going to get a set shade smooth. Now that doesn't actually fix anything. It just smooths out the geometry and shows all of our glaring problems. So a couple things. One, voxel size, bring it down to like 0 0.03. The vo better voxel size, the better it's going to be. Higher poly, all that fun stuff. Then we're going to get a smooth geometry node. Now this is a fun node because you can see some stuff under it. If I double click on the node, it is a position node, a blur attribute, and a set position. So that is an old trick um, that they've now turned into this node. I think it's cool that we're double clicking and you see stuff. So it's a group node that is automatically available in 5.0. So if I plop it right here, if I bring up my iterations, it will smooth that out. So see all this ugliness right here? It will smooth that out. So now when we animate, it's not quite as insane. Now you can still see some issues. So let's go ahead and fix those issues. So after the smooth geometry, it still doesn't fix this circular kind of weirdness. You see that? You can see it right there. I had to go on Twitter and say, hey, everybody, how do you fix this? This has been driving me crazy. I want this tutorial to be perfect. So what we need to do is get a set, set mesh normal. We're going to get a blur attribute. Sharpness needs to be switched to free. Float needs to be switched to vector. And we'll plug this right into custom normal. And now let's go ahead and get a normal node. We'll plug normal into value and then bring your iterations up to like, I did 30 on mine and that, so if I go back, it did fix some stuff. So that circular kind of warbling effect, that's gonna be completely gone now. And look at this. Now it's perfect. Now it's exactly what we need it to be. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna bring up the scale of my effect and then I'm also going to bring up the radius of my points. And now we have really awesome metaball behaviors. So now what we need to do is add materials. We're in the material section of this tutorial now. We're done with the effect. So let's go ahead, get a set material node I'm going to go over here, get a new material, and bring up the transmission, bring the roughness down, and I'm going to grab that right there. So I'm going to go back to the layout. I'm going to go to the front, get a camera, and then in the camera settings, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to do 100 on the focal length to flatten it out a little bit. So now we have this. If I go here to cycles, we see glass, but there's no light. So I'm going to get in a plane. That's not a plane. We're going to get a plane. I'm going to hit R, X. I'm going to hit R, X, 90, and then just move it back and then just scale it up and stretch it out to fit the camera. I'm going to hit control A, apply that scale. And then I'm going to go back to geometry nodes and switch this window to the shader editor. We'll click new. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the principle and get an A emission. So now we have some emission going on. Let's get a color ramp and then pick like a nice light blue, something very faint. Plug that there and we'll get a gradient texture. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, uh, comes with Blender by default. We're going to hit Control T or get a mapping node and a texture coordinate and use the object coordinate and then plug that into the color ramp. So now we have this. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this by 90 degrees here and then switch this to B spline and bring the black node to the middle. And then on the Y scale, we're going to stretch, stretch this gradient out. And then you can use some other stuff. And now we have this nice gradient affecting uh, the world brightness right over here. That needs to be black. Um, and then I found a really easy trick to fix the lighting even more because the lighting's not that great right now. We just have a nice gradient background, uh, but the glass is still seeing like this full world and it just doesn't look that great. So what I'll do, what I'll do is I'll hit shift D just on the plane and then I'll just bring it back and then right up here, I'm going to click this number three and then just sever that. And then I'm going to go over here 
hit control C, co uh, copy that, control V. And then if I just go ahead and scale that background out, it's going to help with some of these highlights in our material. So this is before, after. So it just looks better and you don't see it. If I go ahead and like get a render region, that's the, that's the image. So it looks really pretty and we still get this nice gradient background, which helps uh, us see the glass object. So there's a lot of really cool things going on here. Now let's create that RGB uh, glass effect. So I'm gonna brighten up my uh, background a little bit and we're gonna click on the glass. And what we'll do is delete the principled and we're gonna get a, a glass BSDF and an add shader. We'll plug this here and we're gonna get three glass shaders So for R, G, and B. So let's plug these two right here. I'm gonna hit Shift D, get another add shader and plug this bottom one right in here. And let's get our red, blue, green. So we're gonna go here, go to the RGB, pull these back so we have a pure red. This guy needs to be green. So we're gonna pull it just to be pure green and then this guy to be pure blue. So now it's back um, to look, be uh, looking nice. So now that we have this, what we have to do, the trick is uh, with your index of refraction, your IOR. So what I'll do is I'll bring this back to like 0.45 and this guy to 0.55. Now we have a perfect RGB. So the idea is the middle one, just keep it at like a default IOR and then offset the this one in this one, like this one, slide those numbers to the right. This one, slide those numbers to the left or like lesser and more. And that will offset that color. And now let's go ahead. We're going to get a value node and plug that into the roughness of all three so that we can control the roughness at once. And now you have, and of course making it rough is going to blend those colors going to blend those colors together and get something really cool. So I'm going to switch this back over to geometry nodes. And if you play with the W here, you get a really, really nice looking scene. And it's really beautiful. Um, if you've not seen me loop the W of a noise texture to make an animation, let's just go ahead and loop this and we can be done. Um, bring the W to zero. I'm going to hit shift D on the noise texture. We're going to get a mixed color node. I'm going to give myself like 500 frames. We're going to render this in cycles. So just prepare for a longer than normal render time. Um, and even this isn't really going to be super, super long. So I'm going to bring my factor to the left here, here on the W. Also be sure in your animation preferences, your default interpolation is linear. Now we need to make sure that we go to frame zero first. And then on this top noise texture, I'm gonna hit I. And then on this bottom mix, we're gonna hit I. Go to the very end and I'm gonna type in 0.8 and then slide the factor to the right, hit I. Now that we're at frame 500 or whatever your end frame is, we're gonna hit W, I on the W here. Go back to frame zero. And because this one, I made 0.8, this one will be negative 0.8. And I hit I. And now, now my, my uh, frames per second is really low. That's because this is very high poly. So my voxel size, I'll just bring it to like 0.8 so we can see it. So now we're about, so that's really nice and slow. I find slower movements to be more satisfying. Now this is kind a little bit slower than I'd want. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give my W, we'll do negative 1.1. And then on the very on five frame 500, 1.1 I. So that's a little faster. And then let's make sure this loops. I feel like we're gonna have a problem. No, okay. It's still really slow. So you can speed it up. Um, also, it sounds like I'm losing my voice for some reason. There we go. And so when you are ready to render it, it's like, okay, this looks great. When you're ready to render it, bring your voxel size down to like 0 0.02. And that's gonna make it look perfect. And then you can go ahead and set up your render settings, render it out. Um, if I do a 1920 by 1080 with samples of 200, it shouldn't take forever to render. And the default denoising is pretty great. Yeah, so my, 
was about three seconds and you can add more to it if you want. It's a really beautiful render. Um, and that is how you create this metaball effect in geometry nodes. So there you guys go. That is how you make it. Hopefully you learned some really cool stuff. Um, kind of obsessed with metaballs and I'm glad that we can make them really nice in geometry nodes. Again, if you wanna check out those four exclusive tutorials on Patreon that is linked in the description, a lot of really cool things to learn there. But with that being said, hopefully you guys learned some stuff and I'll see you in the next one.